not cast me away from your face, do not remove your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your salvation. Hold me through your directing spirit. And then I shall teach for the best of your ways, ungodly men shall turn to you. Deliver me from blood, O God, the God of my salvation. My tongue shall rejoice in your righteousness. O Lord, you shall open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. For you have desired sacrifice, I would have given you. You do not take pleasure in burnt offering. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit. A broken and humbled heart, God shall not despise. With the good of the Lord and good pleasure of Zion, that the walls of Jerusalem be built. And then you shall be pleased to sacrifice his righteousness, offering burnt sacrifice. Then they shall offer cows upon altar. Alleluia. And the apostles, when they had returned, told them all that they had done. Then he took them and went aside privately into a deserted place, belonging to the city called Bethsaida. And the multitude, when they knew it, followed him and received them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who had need of healing. And when the day began to wear away, the twelve came and said to him, Send the multitude away that they may go into the towns and country around about and lodge and get provisions, for we are here in the deserted place. But he said unto them, Give them to eat. And they said, We have no more than five loaves and two fish unless we go buy food for all of these people, for they were about 5,000 men. And he said to his disciples, make them sit down in groups of 50. And they did so and made them all sit down. Then he took them five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he blessed them and broke and gave to the disciples to set before the multitude. And they ate and were all filled in 12 baskets, and the remaining fragments were taken up by them. Together. Tasted death in the flesh of the ninth hour. For our sake, we the sinners put to death our carnal lusts, O Christ our God, and deliver us. Let my supplication draw close before you, O Lord. According to your word, give me understanding. Let my petition come before your presence. According to your word, revive me. Now you commended the Spirit to the hands of the Father as you hung on the cross in the ninth hour and guided the thief who was crucified with you into entering paradise. Do not neglect me, O good one, nor reject me. I, the lost one, but sanctify my soul, enlighten my understanding, and allow me to be a partaker of the grace of your life-giving mystery, that when I taste of your benevolences, I offer you praise without lukewarmness. Long for your splendor above all things, O Christ our Lord, and deliver us. O you were born of the virgin for our sake, and endured crucifixion, O good one, and abolished death by your death, manifested resurrection by resurrection. O God, do not turn away from those whom you created with your own hands, but manifest, O good one, your love for mankind. Accept through your mother in intercession on our behalf. Deliver, O Savior, humble people. Do not leave us unto the end. Do not forsake us forever. Do not break your covenant, and do not take away from us your mercy. For the sake of Abraham, your beloved Isaac, and your servant Israel, and your saints. When the thief saw the Prince of Life hung on the cross, he said, Had not the one crucified with us been God incarnate, the sun would not hide its rays, nor the earth quake trembling. For you, the Almighty One, and who endures all things, remember me, O Lord, when you come into your kingdom.
we may be counted with the worshipers worthy of the passions of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Thus we gain mercy and forgiveness of our sins, salvation with the choir of saints, who truly please you since the beginning and forever. O God, abolish for us the power of the adversary and all his evil armies, as your only begotten Son has trampled on them by the power of his life-giving cross. Accept us unto you, O our Lord Jesus Christ, as you accepted the thief at your right while you were hung on the cross, and shine upon us as you have shone upon those who are in the darkness of Hades. Restore us all to the paradise of joy. For you are our master, our blessed God. Unto you is due all glory, honor, majesty, dominion, and worship with your good Father and the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Have mercy on us, O God, and have mercy on us, who at all times and every hour, heaven and on earth, is worshiped and glorified. Christ, our God, long-suffering, the abundant in mercy and the great in compassion, who loves the righteous and has mercy on the sinners of whom I am chief, who does not wish the death of the sinner, but rather that he returns and lives, who calls all to salvation for the promise of good things to come. Lord, receive from us our prayers in this hour and in every hour. Ease our life and guide us to fulfill your commandments. Sanctify our spirits, cleanse our bodies, conduct our thought, purify our intentions, heal our diseases, forgive our sins, deliver us from every evil grief and distress of heart. Surround us by your holy angels, that by their camp we may be guarded and guided and attain the unity of faith. In the knowledge of your imperceptible and infinite glory, we are blessed forever. Amen. Finally, O oh Lord, listen to us as we pray, thankfully saying, Our Father, who art, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. So our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, Lead us on to temptation. Deliver us from the evil one. It's our Lord. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Today, through God's grace, thank God, we are blessed to have uh, with us Abu Ibrahim Wasif, the angel of St. Mina uh, in Holmdale. And um, Abu is going to, God willing, speak to us today about the Holy Trinity. And we are on um, the talk through God's grace, is speaking, or you know, the meetings that we will be having, is going to be speaking about our dogma, our dogma and our faith. And we're going to take it from the time of creation all the way till, through God's grace, the book of Revelation. And this is important for us to know as Orthodox believers and as servants, Taban, um, the story of our salvation. What, uh, who is God? And first off, what is dogma? What does it mean? And why is it important? And then who is God? And how, how do we relate to God? And what is our understanding for, for God? As well as the creation and the fall and um, the original sin and uh, the incarnation. All of this is very important for us to understand. For through God's grace, we will study that together so that we as servants understand or have a good knowledge and a good understanding of it so that when we are questioned, more, more than just the questions, yani, we live by it, but that also when we are questioned, we know how to answer and we know the true Orthodox faith and how to uh, respond to that. Abuna will speak to us, God willing, today about the Holy Trinity.
name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. So happy to see all of you, um, and I, uh, I want your prayers because the topic of the Holy Trinity is, um, is, something, is something that's, uh, that's very essential to our church and our understanding of our salvation and God himself, but it's not something easy to to try to grasp thank you and um, we're going to be reading a lot and i'd like if you have please a bible an actual bible not a phone i want you to open your bibles if you can instead of abuna getting maybe somebody can get a bunch of bibles and I, i'm going to have everybody read something okay so yeah grab all the bi- now everybody have one bible and read do you have bibles enough for each of you okay you know what? Khalas, just we'll do the we'll do the phones. We'll do the phones. No problem, no problem. But hopefully, I uh, mean, we can get used to using the actual Bible, not not the phone um, itself. So anyway, um, our church, the Orthodox Church, is always concerned. Sometimes I'll sit and sometimes I'll stand. Forgive me. The Orthodox Church is always concerned with the with truth with reality, with what is right. And this is, this is all about <clears throat> our salvation, okay? Our God is the God of truth, and he's revealed himself to us. If you read Psalm 98, 2, it says, The Lord has made known his salvation, his righteousness he has revealed in the sight of the nations. So the first thing I want you to remember or understand about our faith is that not a bunch of philosophers got together and sat in a room and thought up the idea of God. God was, has revealed himself to us. He's the one that came down from heaven and chose to reveal himself to us. Before Adam and Eve sinned, there was this connection between us and God. And little by little, as Adam and Eve would grow in the grace of God through the obedience, the obedience, this is all from St. Athanasius, the obedience that they were to give God and continue to give God was to allow them to grow in grace. And the more they're growing in grace, the more they understand and they get closer to God, okay, and become like God. Do you remember what the devil said to, uh, to Eve when he, uh, in chapter 3 of Genesis, when he decided to tempt her? He said, no, 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 Has, hasn't God said you could eat of any of the fruits, uh, any of the trees? And she said, well, yeah, except there's one in the middle that you can't. He said, no, no, unless you die. He said, no, no, you're not going to die. You're not going to die. Actually, you're going to become like God. So this, this idea of becoming like God was in God's plan already. But they were going to get it gradually through their obedience to him. But once they disobeyed, they lost the grace. They were stripped, like stripped off a garment, became naked. And they became um, corrupted, they died, and they carried the sin. You see the idea? So, but my first point that I'd like to say is that God reveals himself. You and I cannot discover God. He's not a science project. He's not a rock or a fossil. He's something that, he's someone, I should say, He's someone that it reveals himself to us, okay? So in the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse, you don't have to look this up. We're going to do the looking up in a minute. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 1 through 2, he says, God, who at various times and various ways spoke in time past to the fathers, by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by a, by his son, by his son. So the prophets came 
And then God himself came in the flesh to reveal himself to us. Do I put that on this side or this side? Okay, so the lecture map today, our discussion, some introductory mar remarks, which is what I just did. Then we're going to start talking. We're going to look at verses. I, I'm going to ask me to let's see the Old Testament, the Trinity in the Old Testament, and the Holy Trinity <clears throat> in the New Testament. And then the fourth point is where we're going to try our best by God's grace and opening our minds and our hearts that we could begin just, I'm going to give you little tools on how to understand the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity. So this is what we're going to be doing, okay? And the first um, section, or the second, I should say, the Holy Trinity in the Old Testament, I'm going to, I have so many verses, and I'm going to give each one a verse, and you're going to read it, and we're going to try to pick out the Holy Trinity in the verse, okay? So... Let's do, oops, I mean, okay, I don't, I don't do eye things, I just, oh, there we go. Okay, so just right from here, just open your phone and start, just read Genesis 1, 26, and then the next person, Genesis 1, 1 through 3, and just let's quickly go through this. There's a lot of verses, and I also have some verses in the New Testament as well. Okay, you read the first one, Harutak number 2. Hadutak number three, number four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay? And then the New Testament, you guys will do that. All right? Go ahead. As soon as you're here. Okay, Pastor. <laughs> then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle. So you see in that first verse, you see the word us, correct? Us, okay? Us, let us make man, okay? The Hebrew word for God is Elohim, as you know. And Elohim is a plural. It's not a majestic we, W-E. In other words, when the king of England or the queen of England speaks, they say, we have declared we it's just one it's you it's this uh, this uh, tool that they use to magnify themselves this is not a magnification this is a correct translation number two please Genesis one, yeah. one, two, one. in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep and the spirit of the God was hovering over the face of the water. But the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, uh, lest you die. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil, and now lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and life forever. Then the Lord appeared to him by the trembling trees of memory as I was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. So he lifted his eyes and looked and behold there is three men were standing by him. Interpretations to this verse. 
The first is from St. Augustine, who considers the three angels to be the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Sorry. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And from St. Justin the Martyr, he said, no, his opinion, his interpretation, it was the Lord, okay, the divine apparitions of the Son of God, Jesus Christ our Lord, but pre-incarnate. Okay, so we can't think like he was born of the Virgin yet because he wasn't. But it's, they call it the divine apparitions of the Logos in the Old Testament. And St. Justin says it was him and the two angels. And our church, being faithful to the scripture, we know we just read, this is Genesis 18, right? We know that the two, two of them, the two angels, went to who? To Sodom and Gomorrah to see who? Lot. So it, was, it says two angels. So it's not the Trinity. But I just want to point out in that verse that you have the first, perhaps the first divine apparition of the pre-incarnate Logos. Okay? Let's go to the next one. Who's next? Uh, here, you can use the... I was watching in the night vision, and uh, behold, one like the son of the man coming with the cloud of the heaven. He was coming to the agent of the days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given the man and glory and a kingdom that all people, nation, language, should serve him. His man in the ablation, the man which is, shall not pass away. And his skin. So do you see what happened here? One like who? The son of man. Thank you. And uh, where did he go? What did he do? He was presented or he came to who? The ancient of days. Okay? So now you see, uh, you're starting to see a more clear, a clearer, not that clear yet. We're going to see that in the New Testament. But you're, gonna, you're starting to see spirit hovering over. Let us make man in our image and according to our likeness. Uh, he, he ate, so he's going to be like one of us. And then the ancient of days, the son of man. Okay, there's a lot. Here, the angel, the two angels, and the pre-incarnate logos, when they go to Abraham under the terebinth trees. Okay, so you, you're starting to see and you're starting to, to see this unraveling, <coughs> unraveling of God, the Holy Trinity, but not fully, not fully. Uh, question, why wouldn't the Lord in the Old Testament reveal himself fully as Trinity? Anybody have an idea? What if one of the, your kids in some big school or youth asked you that? What would you say? Think. Okay, they weren't ready. What else? Why weren't they ready? You're right. What's the why? I'm sorry? Okay. You can, you can use the microphone here. Let me stop it. Yeah. And try to eat. Like, to prepare for um, when... When Jesus Christ incarnate in the okay. New Testament. Okay. But to think they would that's never, Israel is never going to see him. They're all dead. Okay. Good point. But yes, Habib. Give him the microphone, please. Um, earlier in human history, they were more prone to polytheism. So they may have ended Perfect. up worshiping three separate gods. Perfect. Perfect. First, they lack the Holy Spirit. Okay. All of them. There were some who had it, the prophets, priests, and kings, right? Second, they were surrounded by so many polytheistic uh, nations so that if, if he reveals himself as, as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, what's going to happen? They're going to start a worshiping the three, okay? Let's continue. Let's do this quickly, okay? Okay. Um, the next person, go ahead. Look, he answered, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Hmm. Okay, again, 
the Son of God, okay? Uh, number, what was that, number six? Okay, number seven, please go ahead. Psalm 2, seven. This is a big one, and this is what we, the Lord Jesus Christ referred to into the, in the New Testament. Go ahead, Habibi. I will declare the decree. Uh, the Lord mm -hmm. has said to me, you are my son today. I have. I have begotten you. Begotten you. The Lord begotten. Okay? Again, you see how it's getting a little bit clearer and clearer? Next person, uh, Isaiah number 8. Go ahead. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel, which is what? God with us. Okay, again, it's getting clearer. Go ahead, number uh, 9, Hosea. When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. Okay. Out of Egypt, I have called my son. Yes, Israel is considered the son, okay, of God, but at, it, as a collective, but it's, it, it's also referring to the, when the Lord came out of Egypt and goes back to Palestine, Judea, Jerusalem, that area after Herod dies. Okay, go ahead, Exodus. And the, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of the bush. So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Okay, very good. So again, this is considered by the church fathers a huge pre-incarnate apparition, or the apparition of the pre-incarnate logos. Okay, again, he's coming out more and more and more. Go ahead. The Lord said to my Lord, ah, sit at my right yeah, hand, yeah, till I make your enemies your footstool. Okay, this specific quote, which is what comes from Psalm 110, is what the Lord Jesus Christ used to dispute with the Jews about his identity. How do you explain? The Lord said to my Lord. Okay? Again, Trinity in the book of Psalms. And I think the last one, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Go ahead. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go, for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Okay, so, and then I think maybe the verse before or after, he asks him what, yeah. what um, his name is. Yeah, so he said to yeah. him, what is your name? He hmm. said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have been, for you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Okay. Then Jacob asked, saying, tell me your name, I pray. Hmm. And he said, why is it that you ask about my name? And he blessed him there. Exactly. So the angel is blessing. The angel is not giving him the name. He said, I'm wrestling with God. God. Okay, again, one of the pre-incarnate apparitions of the Logos. Okay, so let's see. Let's do, let's have some, we'll read now the Trinity in the New Testament. Maybe we could start on this side. Did anybody, everybody got a chance here? Okay, um, you do number one, okay. Um, Fabian. Fabian, do number two, please. Pull up the Bible, 1 John 5, 7. Uh, Madame Hadritik, number 3. Mira, number 4. Um, 5, 6. Uh, Madame, uh, 7. And then 8. Okay? Tadale. When all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. And while he prayed, the heaven was opened. And the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven which said, You are my blessed, you are my beloved son, and who in you I am well pleased. Okay, so here now in the new in the New Testament, the Trinity now in the feast of the Theophany, Theos, God, uh, Thani, manifestation, coming out. Okay, this is the clearest sign, the clearest event which depicts Father's voice. Son in the Jordan, the Holy Spirit alighting upon the Son. And then those other three, A, B, and C underneath, are the other Gospels of where this is also written. Go ahead, Mr. Yeah. 
For there uh, are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three, three are one. Are one. You can't get clearer than that. Okay? All right. Go ahead. Next person. If you can give her the microphone, the first person. Yeah. Thank you. Galatians 4. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his, God, his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under, under the law. The law. Thank that you. That's good. So you see again, you see he's coming. He's been born now. Okay. Next Sorry. person. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody. Second Corinthians 13, 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the, com and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You hear that all the time, right? Abuna's up there. He's firing at you these blessing the Trinity. He mentions Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay? Next person. مبارك الله أبو ربنا يسوع المسيح الذي حسب رحمته الكثيرة ولدنا ثانية للرجاء حي بقيامة يسوع المسيح من الأموات. Thank you. The same idea. Okay. It says in English, to the pilgrims of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father in sanctification of the Spirit for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. John 14. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient, sufficient. for us. Mm -hmm. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip. He who has seen me has seen the Father, so how can you say, show us the Father? Do you, not believe? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father, Father in me? In me. And we're going to talk about this Son and in the Father and the Spirit and them in each other. There's a specific um, theological term. Thank you. And the last one, last person. Fadali. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, okay. teaching them to observe the all things that I, I have commanded you, and I, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. 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 Okay. So you see, my beloved, that there's, there's this natural, a natural unraveling or, or natural revealing of the Holy Trinity from the first word in the scriptures, the first two, three verses, all the way through all of these verses that we've been talking about. Okay, so another thing I'd like you to know about the term Trinity, the term Trinity itself is not found in the Holy Scriptures, okay? And that shouldn't alarm you because neither is Theotokos. Okay, there's a lot of, uh, there are some theological terms that we use, and they are pillars in our faith, but yet they're not in the Holy Scriptures. And this is not a problem for us, because these things are spiritually discerned. St. Paul in the book of Romans, he says that the things of God, the things of the Spirit, are spiritually discerned. And people that don't have the spirit cannot discern the things of God. So you all have the spirit, okay? And you know certain things and you've spoken to people who are very intelligent. You give them one simple little fact or one simple little revelation that you know is true and it what? It flies right over their head. They have no idea and they can't grasp it. So don't be, don't be worried that this word is not in the scriptures. The first person to use it, the, the, the term Trinity, was St. Theophilus of Antioch, okay, in which 
he, he wrote in the second century, and he was writing, he defines the Trinity in, in his writing against uh, a certain person. Um, then you find Tertullian the scholar and Justin the martyr and St. Clement also start writing and using the word Trinity to defend, okay? They're defending. You know that St. Justin the martyr and, and Tertullian the scholar and even St. Clement in certain of his writings were, were uh, defenders of the faith because they were being attacked by paganism at that point. The church was attacked by paganism. And notice that in every time of the history of the church, the church has very different challenges. From the beginning of the church, it was attacked by paganism, philosophy, Judaism, okay, atheism, right? Now, what would you say the church is attacked by? Exactly. Everything. Okay, and this is the time when we have to go back to these wonderful and very spiritual fathers and learn how to speak about the Trinity. You know that they accused the early church, Abuna knows, of cannibalism. You know that, right? Okay, so I don't have to say anything about it. Okay, cannibalism, because they thought that the sacrifice we offer is a little baby. And because back then the doors would be closed, nobody would be allowed to enter except those who were to take Holy Communion. Not even a catechumens. At one point, the catechumens were escorted out. Catechumens are the ones who were preparing for the baptism. They were escorted out. Okay? So nobody knew what we're, they were doing. And so they thought we were cannibals. St. Justin the Martyr, he, he really defends. He defends. So you should read if you have any time. Please read St. Justin the Martyr very powerful and it's very useful for our dilemma that we're in right now okay especially you, you young people who are in college you face this all the time and even in high school now so the dogma of the life-giving co-essential trinity was dogmatized or codified enshrined in two ecumenical councils nicaea 325 and constantinople 381 Okay, and what did they codify? What, did, what was their um, explanation or understanding? Trinity, tri, uni. Tri, three, unity. Three, one, one, and three. The same thing we still sing till this day in Asomen Tokereyo. Okay, three and one, one and three, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, and in these, the relationship, remember how uh, the Lord was saying to Philip, the Father is in me and I in him, okay? This is a technical term that you should be aware of. It's called perichoresis, how the mutual indwelling of the three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, how they actually indwell. Of course, it's a mystery. We don't, we don't uh, proclaim to know everything, okay? But you have, you have these two verses that kind of show us this inter, uh, indwelling of each, of each other, okay? And that, by the way, that, that um, symbol right there to the right is actually a very, uh, if you go to Europe, most every single Catholic or even early, early, early Protestant uh, cathedrals have these everywhere. Okay, you also have like, um, you know, the, what is it, the Louisiana Saints or it's that, 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 um, that team and they have this symbol. I'm sorry for my ignorance, I don't watch sports, but they're called the Saints. They're football, right? What is, it, what is their symbol? Anybody know it? It's a thing, it's like, I don't know, like a one, two, three, and it's tied at the bottom, right? That is also everywhere in, in Europe, in Christian Europe, years ago, okay? And this sign too, it's all in their windows. It's showing this, 
idea of the indwelling of the Holy Trinity. I am in the Father, the Father in me. The words that I speak to you, I do not speak of my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the work. And the other one, Father in me and I in you, in his high priestly prayer. Okay? So now, let us, by God's grace, hopefully, if he gives me a word, um, let's speak about the Holy Trinity. Okay? Now, before we speak about the Holy Trinity, I want you to understand something. Sometimes, if you're trying to understand something, the truthfulness of something, the exactness of something, you should, you could, you could know the subject by what is false about it. Okay? So, the heresies against the Trinity. And I, I have here, I prepared a... a um, handout with with maybe I don't know five six seven just everybody you can keep the rest and give it to the others these are heresies against the Holy Trinity throughout the ages okay you don't have to read it now but when you finish when we finish when you go home and you try to review and pray to God that he can open your heart and mind this is a good way to know what we believe by realizing what is fake so like years ago, when people would um, try to identify a uh, counterfeit bill, a counterfeit, right? They'd have examples of the counterfeit so that they know what the real one is. So the, this, all of these things are counterfeit sayings or beliefs about the Holy Trinity. And there's modalism. Okay, this is a big one and we all use it. This is a heresy and we say it, okay? We say things like, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is like water, ice, and what? Vapor. That is the heresy of Sabellianism. So please don't use that. <laughs> That's saying there's one God, and he comes in three different forms. That's not the Trinity. The Trinity is one essence and three hypostasis, three distinct Persons, And when I say person, I don't mean a person like you, because you're all people, but you're separate. Whereas in the Trinity, there's three persons, hypostasis, but a one essence. And we say that in the Creed, the Nicene Constantinopolitan Creed. So we, we use that example a lot. Don't use it. Don't use it. Okay? So Arianism, Ebionism... All these things are on that paper. I won't spend time explaining them, but this is going to be very helpful to you because you're going to, oops, you're going to realize, you're going to realize what the Trinity, I'm sorry, who the Trinity is. I have, I have enough room in here. I have enough room. Here. You'll understand or you'll realize the Trinity just by a, just by studying. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry. Just by a, just by knowing what it is, what the Trinity is not, adoptionism, partialism. Okay, I want you to read that this handout very carefully. Okay, try to figure out what the Trinity is not, so that you can at least, if you're not able to get it yet, okay, you're, you, then what you can do is kind of eliminate this. Okay, this is wrong in my thinking. This is not correct. This is not correct. Even though I might not yet get it, but at least I'll eliminate some things so it'll be a little bit more <coughs> um, clear to me. All right, so again, I want to share a quote with you. We still haven't gotten to the Trinity. This is all uh, <laughs> kind of introduction, okay? St. Cyril of, Ale uh, of Jerusalem, this is what he says. If someone says that the essence of God is, is incomprehensible, then why do we speak about him? Why are we talking about him if we can't? So he says, is it really true that because I can't drink the whole river, 
I will not take water from it in moderation for my own benefit. If when going into some great garden, I cannot eat all the fruits, would you wish that I go away from that garden completely hungry? So, again, I want you to understand that these things that we're talking about are not, this is not science. You can understand science because it's a finite thing. Your mind can wrap around it. You can be a physicist and you know everything about physics. But when it comes to God, that's not the case. So don't worry. Don't be afraid. Even when many, you know all the stories. I don't want to waste time because we have a lot to cover. But you know that, you know, the, the, the example of um, St. Augustine when he was walking on the seashore and he saw this kid with this uh, little scoop thing and he scooped a little hole out. And so he started thinking, he looked at the ocean or the water and he looked at this and he said, I can't even comprehend this whole water cannot enter. I can't put it in here. What about God in this little brain of mine? It's not an excuse. This is a limitation we have. But the more I'm connected with the spirit and the more grace I have, the more I can spiritually discern. And the more I, I it can be, these things can be revealed to me, to you, and have been to the saints by God. Okay? So it's something to, to think about. Um, so we use a lot of analogies, okay? But they're incomplete and inadequate, okay? And I think we have to be careful when you actually do use an analogy, whatever it may be, okay? Just remember, like we use again, sun, which is fire, light, and heat. That's a pretty good one, but they're not one. Okay, they're not one. If you know, if, if you know about that side, they're not one. Water, like I said, the human body, soul, spirit, we can use that. But look at what St. Gregory said. St. Gregory the theologian. I have very carefully considered this matter, Trinity, in my own mind. And have looked at the matter in, a ver in every point of view. In order to find some likeness of this mystery. But I have been able, unable to discover anything on earth which, with which to compare the nature of the Godhead. Okay? I didn't come here to tell you that we can't know anything about the Trinity. Okay? This is what I'm, you're probably thinking. But no, no. We can a little bit. As much garden, there's a whole garden, you're not going to go. When you go to a restaurant, do you order everything on the menu and eat everything on the menu? No. You pick, but you don't go into a restaurant and because you can't eat everything, you're going to walk away hungry. Okay, you see the idea? Okay, so now in order for us, now we're going to talk, God willing, about the all holy trinity. All right. You have to know two very important words. Okay, and I'm going to use an example. Okay. What do you see in that picture? What do you see? You see a what? A dog and you see a, a human being, okay? And so the first, the first word that you have to understand or, or just put a grasp on is the idea of nature. Essence, usia. These are all Greek words. Nature, essence, usia. And it, it, it is, whenever you look at something, you first say, what is it? I looked at that picture, and I see, I ask, what? What is that? That's a human, and that's a dog. What defines a human? What defines a human? What are the characteristics of a human? So any creature, I see a frog, Nobody would say that's a human. So the what talks about the essence of God. Gohar, Usiya, nature, essence. Okay? So what, what is that? The guy on the, the, that thing on the left is a human. Why? Because he has two eyes. He has a nose. Two hands, it looks like. Two feet. 
okay, his upright. So there are certain characteristics of the human nature. So when you look at him, when you look at that picture, you can tell be, just by asking the, uh, the, the question of what is. So the nature answers the question, what is, okay? Two eyes, one nose, two legs, etc. okay? These are what they call the essential or the characteristics of the essence. So I have, for example, this is my cross. It's made out of wood. What's the essence of this? Wood. What's the essence of this bench you're sitting on? Wood. What's the essence of the iconog uh, iconostasis? Wood. Okay? So it's what. What is this? What is this? So anytime you speak about the Trinity, first question is what? He is in, what is he? He's divine. He's God. Now, <clears throat> I'll give you another example. I have a gold ring, a gold necklace, and a gold bracelet. What is the essence of that? Gold. They're three, they're different. I'm not using this as an example. I'm just using it as an example of nature. The essence of the ring, the necklace, and the bracelet, okay? Um, you have a cotton swab, you have a cotton ball, and you have a cotton pillow. What's the essence? Cotton, okay? Wooden toothpick, wooden table, wooden chair. Essence, nature, usia, wood, all right? So similarly, when you speak about the Trinity, the Holy Trinity, what is the Trinity? That's what you say, what? What, the answer, God. God, divine, in his essence. Now, what does that mean? Let's break it down a little bit further. So we have things like, Eternal, okay? All good, omniscient, knowing all, all righteous, all holy, all just, almighty, omnipresent, uncreated. I'm asking what is God? He's eternal. What is God? He's all good. The characteristics that separate him or, I'm sorry, define him from everything else. I am not eternal. I am not all good. I am not omniscient. Therefore, I cannot be God. Okay? And I prepared also a, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get it to you a little bit later. I'm not all holy. I'm not all righteous. I'm not almighty, so I'm not God, but God is. God is omnipresent, okay? He's uncreated. He is truth, wisdom, reason, love, light. All these answer the question, what? That's the essence, okay? The properties of his nature, the properties of his essence. Now, let's consider another picture, okay? Let's consider another picture. Okay, Abuna <laughs> Murus, what's the chip? Okay, Mosaklis <laughs> Shabab. Okay, the second, the second a term you need to understand or know when you speak about the Holy Trinity is hypostasis or person. This term distinguishes between the same essence. So you're all people here, but you're not one. One of you is Krolluf, one of you is Mary. Okay? So it's, when we get to the, the, the idea of, of hypostasis or hypostasis, it's who is. So I distinguish, I distinguish Abuna, different, I know, maybe different color eyes, height, age, hair color, beard, voice, personality, scarf, weight, roles in the church, but they're both a, who are they? They are human. What are, I'm sorry, what are they? They are human, but who are they? They are what? Two different. Abuna Mortlis, Abuna Gregory. Okay, so 
the idea of hypostasis okay, is what distinguishes. So we say three in one and one in three. One essence, three hypostasis. So what distinguishes, when I say hypo the hypostasis of the Father, the hypostasis of the Son, the hypostasis of the Holy Spirit, I'm asking what distinguishes the Father from the Son and the Holy Spirit, the Son from the Father and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit from the Father and the Son. That's that word, okay? But all three, what, what is the Father, what is the Son, what is the Holy Spirit? God. Why? Because they share in all those qualities I mentioned. Uncreated, omnipresent, almighty, all good, all holy, okay? So, all right, so now let's get, maybe we can give you the, the chart now. What distinguishes, now, the hypostatic properties? There are only three. Each, what distinguishes God the Father from the Son and the Holy Spirit? Hadar? He's the Father. Is the Father the Son? Is the Son the Father? No. Can the father be called father without a son? No. You got, you, a lot of you are married, but maybe you don't have children yet. The day that you had a child, you were, a, you were called a dad, a father, Baba. Before that, you weren't a Baba. No. Now, the difference is you, because there's a time, we're dealing with time, but he, okay, the Holy Trinity, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, have there's no no time issues he was always a father because he was always he always had a son there was never a time when the father never had a son without his holy spirit okay at the same time always forever okay there's no such thing as a as as back and forth so what about the, the now the father he's the father but there's also another characteristic He's unbegotten. He's the, what the church calls the fountainhead. Un, he wasn't generated by anything. Okay? Now, at the same time, what is the distinguishing um, hypostatic property of the son? He's begotten. And actually, it's very important to say not just begotten, but monogenes, which is what? Only begotten. Okay? That word only, mono, is preserving the balance of the all-holy trinity. And I've noticed in our liturgical books that when, when he says, uh, it, especially in Arabic, when it goes from the Coptic to the Arabic, he says, ibnak al-wahid. It doesn't say ibnak al-wahid al-gins. So when I do the liturgy, I always put wahid al-gins, mono genis, all the time have to understand that. So the hypostatic property of the Son is that He is what? Begotten. And we say it in the Creed. Begotten before all ages. Light of light, true God of true God, etc. What is the hypostatic property of the Holy Spirit? Procession from who? You sure? You sure? Not the Father and the Son. Just the Father. Why not the Father and the Son? What would happen to the balance of the Trinity? If you understand what I'm saying, then you're going you're gonna to be able to answer this question. Yes, Habib. Yes? Exactly. Which is not his hypostatic property. The only thing that distinguishes the Son from the Father and the Spirit is he's the begotten, the only begotten. The thing that distinguishes the property, the hypostatic property that distinguishes the Holy Spirit from the other two hypostases is who is what? He was, he proceeded from the Father. And this we find in the gospel 
of St. John chapter 15, verse 26. And this is one of the biggest reasons for our difference between us and the Roman Catholic Church. Okay? Up until the 8th century, okay, up until the 8th century, every Christian on the planet understood that the Holy Spirit proceeded from the Father only. It was when the Arian heresy that kind of kind of kind of like survived in Europe till the 8th 9th century okay one of the popes said he proceeds from the father and the son so that they could do what so they they could safeguard the divinity of the son and equating him with the father but they then they did the, the misbalance of the holy trinity they're ascribing to him a hypostatic property okay so hypostatic property of Abu Namo'us is he has a gray beard. It's not his hypostatic property. In that picture, maybe now he, you know, Buna does, <laughs> thanks to uh, you guys <laughs> and all the kids and all the service. But in that picture, right, the hypostatic property of Abu Gregory is he has nothing to do with gray hair in that, in that one. I can't ascribe to him just because they're two priests. Okay, well, they're the same. No, they're distinguished. Hypostatic property of the Father is different than the Son, is different than the Holy Spirit. And there's only just those few. So if you look, you just saw that um, you have this in your hand, right? So if you look like to the left, going from top to bottom, Top to bottom. Properties of essence. You see that? All of them share truth, reason, wisdom, etc. So the Father, He's the truthful. He's the source of truth. The Son is the truth. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. The Spirit is what? The Spirit of truth. Okay? This is how the essence, they're all sharing in what? The one essence. What? What is the Holy Spirit? He's God. Why? Because he's the spirit of truth. What is God the Father? He is the source of truth. What is the, the, Holy, the Son? God the Son? He is the truth itself, who has been manifested to us. Do you see? And they've never, there's never a time when they're separate. Whenever you see the Father or you, you deal with the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in any way, they're all three. This idea of perichoresis, they're always indwelling. Take, for example, love. God the Father is what? The lover of mankind. That's why he sent his only begotten Son, okay? Then the Son is love, okay? And then the, the Spirit is the Spirit of love. Okay? So they all share in the essence, this column. Now, if you take from the, the left to the right, and you see Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, fatherhood, okay? He's the fountain. He's the unbegotten one. The Son is the only begotten. That's what makes him the Son. And then the Holy Spirit is the one who has pro like proceeded, proceeded from the Father. And those three are the only hypostatic distinguishing properties of the three. Everything else they share equally. And everything they do, they do together. Everything they do, they do together. And Abuna told me that we shouldn't talk about this because you're going to get it in the next few, you know, the salvation history and how the Trinity works together. So I'm not going to talk about that now. But everything they do, they do together okay now if you take for example let's take let's take this out of the context of theology okay what is this in my hand what what is I'm asking you what? 
So what, it, what am I looking for? You're going to tell me that, that second point, the characteristics. What is this? It's a pen. How do you know it's a pen? Okay, it writes. Every pen has either, they, it, it has ink inside. Every pen, it has some sort of cover with either one of those click things you can put in the point or not, or you can what? You can cover it that way. It has some sort of barrel where I can ink. This is a pen. What? The nature of this object is that is what? It's a pen. Okay, now, let's go to hyperstatic. Okay, the distingu what is hyperstatic? The second point? Distinguishing property. What is this? No, what is it? What? It's a pen. Why is it a pen? Because it has ink, it has a cover, it has exact same properties. Okay? But again, this is a bad example because Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one. These two pens are not one. So they're sharing the nature of penness, if you may, if you'll allow me. This is what nature, what is this? The essence of this is pen, penness. They both share penness. But what distinguishes the hypostasis of the blue and the red? What is the difference? This one is blue, this one is red, but they're both exact identical pens. You see, you see how this works? So if you take like a triangle, if I make a perfect triangle, okay, and it's made out of gold, what is the essence of that triangle? What is the essence of that triangle? Gold. Is the tip on the top gold? Is this one gold? Is this one gold? It's all gold, right? Now, now. But what distinguishes the Father from the Son from the Holy Spirit? Okay? Not spatially, but now let's get back to that, this thing here. The top. The hypostatic property of the Father who's always at the top. You know, did you ever notice the Roman Catholic um, depiction of the Trinity is an upside down triangle? Did you ever notice that? Thank you. Did, did you ever notice that? Yes. That's, that's a whole other story about depicting the Father. But. But the issue I'm saying here, and I know I'm taking, I'm taking too much time, and I'm going to finish in like two minutes, okay? Um, no, no, I have to finish. Because <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm dumb. I don't know anything. I don't know anything. So, so um, going back to the triangle, their triangle is, it's actually the two points up here and the point goes down that way. Why? Why? Exactly, because they believe in the procession of the Spirit from who? Father. Father and the Son. Wrong. It's This is the correct one. According to John 15, 26, the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father, period. So the Father is the fountainhead. So now if I take that point up there, what's the essence of that point? What is the essence? It's a gold triangle. What's the essence? It's gold. This point, what's the essence? Gold. What's this point? Gold. Are they the same points? No, they're not. Are they one? Yes, one essence. One essence. This point is equivalent to this and to this. There's no difference, right? Okay, but, but, now let's get to this. Now we get back to theology. The hypostasis, who? Who is the point up top? He's the Father who is the fountainhead. He's the unbegotten. He's the origin, the fountain, Yambua. The Son is begotten. It's the only difference. But what, does he share the essence? Yeah. But the only difference is what? He's begotten. And then the same with the Spirit on this side. The Spirit, does he, say, does he share the same essence? Okay, but what's the difference? His hypostatic property that differentiates him. The hypostatic property of the penness. One is red, one is blue, but they're identical. 
get it? So he proceeds from the Father. This, my beloved, this is the way we begin to understand or to, to, to taste the little type of truth from the Holy Trinity, from my example about the garden. You're not going to eat everything. This is maybe the first time, second, 20th, 100th time you've been uh, exposed to the dogma of the Holy Trinity. And every time, okay, you get a little bit more. Okay, so don't, don't be upset um, if you don't understand or, or you're not getting it all. So nature, let's go back quickly. I'm going to do a quick, let's just help, help to kind of summarize. So God is one in essence. True or false? True, true or false? True. Okay. God is three in person, hypostasis. True or false? True. Okay, so true or false? Nature essence is common to all true or false the essence the goal it's common to all true or false true, true. okay um, hypostasis is variable between all true or false the hypostasis uh, the two abunas the abunas but they're what they're distinguished. Sometimes older ones, younger, hegumen, uh, priest, uh, voice, uh, size, shape, color. Okay? Same thing with this. Okay? These are hypostatic. The red is a hypostatic property of this pen. The blue is a hypostatic property of this pen. But what is the nature of what is this? What are both of these? Pen. And they share. They are Pen. Same thing. God the Father, he's unbegotten, he's the origin, he's the fountainhead. But what's his essence? All of these things. Truth, reason, wisdom, all of this. Okay? The Son. Okay? He's the only begotten Son. But what is the property? What, what is he? All of these. He shares. The Holy Spirit. He is the one who proceeds. But what is he? Who is he is the preceding one. What is he is this column that they all share. The gold in, a, in that triangle. The wooden toothpick, the wooden cross, the wooden bench. What's the essence? Wood. But what makes a toothpick a toothpick? Can I use this as a toothpick? No, because it's not shaped like that. Can I use this as a toothpick? No, I can't, right? You see the idea, you see the difference? So it's very important for you to understand. This is, this is the summary. This is the summary of one and three, three and one. Try un, try un. Three unified, three and one. One in and three, okay? So, Here's the, the uh, chart. I'm going to put the red arrow going up and uh, back and forth, left to right. And then, so which ones are the hypostatic properties? The, one, the three on top. That's the only distinguishing properties between the three hypostases. The one from top to bottom is the essence. They share everything. Okay? God bless you. They share everything. Okay? And here are the hypostatic properties and the essence. Okay, so essence, all those that I mentioned are right there. And on the right side, the hypostatic property of the Father, He's the source, He's the fountain, He's unoriginal. Okay? Son, filiation, or sonship. Filiation and sonship. And He's the only begotten, the monogenes. And then the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father only, or the word, the technical theological word, is spiration, not inspiration. S-P, spiration. Okay, that comes from the idea of the coming forth or proceeding from God the Father. And glory be to God forever. Amen. Any questions? You can, you can ask Abuna or Abuna. <laughs> not me. I did my part. <laughs> Fadda, Fadda. is a 
the mystery. So when you go through these analogies, you know, it comes back to the question of, okay, well, those are analogies, right? That's not God, right? And they'll throw the polytheism, oh, you're worshiping three gods, even though you make the distinguishing characteristics and you explain the essence. So is, are we really only placing the seed? Is there more we can explain about the Holy Trinity? Do we just let the spirit just do it, you know, do his work? Um, when we evangelize and we talk to people about the Trinity, because it's a big topic yeah. um, in our faith, you know, amongst other faiths. Absolutely. I, I agree. It's one of the biggest, probably the biggest obstacles. But we do, like you said correctly, we have to put seeds down, try to use as many examples, but you always have to preface by saying that there is nothing that is understandable. Because... If God is completely understandable, he is not, not God. God. He's not God. He's not, he can't be put under a microscope. Okay, and, and I would, what I do when I get those questions or objections, I talk about the, the nature of faith. You walk into an elevator, you press the button, and it goes up. You have faith that you walk in, the door opens, you press the button. Do you think at all about, no, I know I'm going up. I know I'm going down. When you get on an airplane, you're going here and you're going to go to Fort Lauderdale. Okay? Or forget about that. Corpus Christi. The day of. <laughs> you like the day of. Forget about the, uh, Fort Lauderdale. Although there's, there's churches there too. Yeah. <laughs> so you go, you go to Corpus Christi. Okay? You're on the plane. Don't you have faith that that's the plane and the plane is going to get you there? Do you have to know how? When you take a Tylenol, maybe you're not a pharmacist. You have no idea what Tylenol does to the body. But you know, when you take it, your fever, what, goes down, and your pain is, what, relieved. So I, take, I, 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 I talk about the, I would talk about the nature of faith first, okay? That every one of us trusts. When your pharmacist gives you your blood pressure pills, you trust it. You have faith in it, <clears throat> or, unless you're going to take it, go to a lab, chop it up, test put it. it under a microscope, test it with all these reagents and solutions, and then take it. Who does that? Nobody does that. So why do we do it when it comes to God? We believe history books. We believe all these things, but we don't believe the revelation of God. And I think it, part of our, maybe our approach to evangelism should be more about steering away from the complicated things first because like we said earlier you need faith to be able to discern when God gives them faith they will begin they, it will be unraveled in front of them and revealed to them because our, our faith is a revealed faith our God revealed himself to me to you, to the church, to the apostles to everybody, to the prophets who came to Abraham? Did Abraham go, or did he come to Abraham? Okay. Noah. Who reached out to Noah? God. Noah didn't reach out. Yeah, he was a good man. He had faith, but who reached out? The Almighty. He's the one. And this is exactly what St. Athanasius says, is that after we sinned, our vision turned from going up, our upward vision was now because of our corruption and our sin and our death, everything now is physical to me and you. So he came to be what? Object of my senses. So that I could look at him and then as he ascends on the 40th day, like the apostles did, and the angel said what? Why are you there standing, gazing? The same way he went up, eh? He's going to come back down. Another question? So like in school, we're like we're obviously like questioned, especially by like um, our Muslim peers about how would you like, how do you break down the Trinity? Um, so like, what's like the best way to, especially if someone doesn't understand our faith or they have like very different views um, about like you know who God is? How what's the best analogy you would give to break something down to that? Um, that's a hard one. Because there are no analogies that are 100% accurate. But I would use, I would use a, a, 
What do you think of him? I, 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 maybe the son, yeah. The son. Islam, if you, yeah, the judging, and actually it says that God will, uh, sorry, God, um, yeah, and they say, they say God, they say God, right, I say, well then, Isa ibn Maryam must be God. Because the light has a different essence than, than the heat, than the helium, the fiery helium in the sky, right? So it's a good analogy for us when we understand that the essence part is something like there's nothing like that. Perhaps maybe even the human. Maybe the human can be. Okay, maybe that one. Where we're soul, body, and spirit. We have a rational mind, the body, and I'm, I'm breathing. I'm alive. But I'm one person. You remove my brain. Conversations just for the sake of conversation. Okay. Like in, yeah, don't get into conversations with someone that just wants to provoke. Yeah. Yeah. المسيح لما يجي يكسر الصليب ويذبح الخنزير هو هيجي ديان ولا هيجي يعمل دول كالعادة الإسلام لخبط يقول حاجة والعكسها ما عشان هو اختار ولبخ من كل ناحية وما عارفش يضبط الموضوع فبقت حاجات ضد بعض مقياس لنا المسيح الإسلام I think I think I think the best thing the best thing is to just Take a look at that sheet of paper that I gave you about the, the heresies. And zabbat, fix what's in your mind, okay? Focus on just those two words and pray to God. Ask him to, to, to open your mind and my mind and all of our minds to understand this. I give essence, all right? And hypostat, who, what, okay? And then little by little, but I would avoid, I would avoid things and I would, uh, I would avoid talking about the technical thing with somebody that is out to prove that you're wrong. If they really want to know, God will give them the grace. Okay? Any other questions? No, nobody on this side has questions? No? No? Okay. Somebody? Yes, sir. Um, I was going to ask for, in terms of our prayers, when they... When our Lord uh, Jesus Christ said, uh, when you pray, you pray, you say our Father, right? Um, in our prayers, when it's directed to the Father, and uh, how we worship the Holy Trinity, in terms of our prayer, uh, personally, when we direct our prayers um, towards, we direct our prayers towards the Father, correct? Yeah, most, okay. most of, I mean, we, we, we can, we do most of our prayers, and even the majority of our liturgy, and the Lord's Prayer, is all directed to God the Father. But in our mind, when you're saying our Father, do you really pray to the Father? Or are you thinking of the Lord Jesus Christ? Yeah, which doesn't make sense because at the end it says through Jesus Christ our Lord. The church, we pray to the Father, we pray to the Son, we pray to the Holy Spirit. Okay, but the majority of our prayers are to God the Father. Who, because he's the origin, the, the fountainhead, he's the one that planned the economy, 
the plan of salvation. He's the one that sent his only begotten son and the Holy Spirit proceeds from him and testifies to him and brings to remembrance the things that the Lord Jesus Christ did, okay? Through it all to give glory to God the Father in his plan. And that's why, don't get confused too, another thing, St. Paul says, uh, God raised up Jesus. He raised up Jesus. That's what it says. That's our scripture. So that means that implies that Jesus, our Lord, is either separate or he's weak. He didn't raise himself. He said it even in John chapter, I think, 5. I let my life down and I will take it up. So what does it mean? It, when St. Paul says that, he's saying it to highlight the fact that the economy, the plan of salvation, originated with God the Father. And when God the Father raised God the Son, the plan is completed. Not because God the Son is less. Right? Because remember, He's not less. He's everything. He's everything that the Father is. The what? But the who is different. The who is what? Yes, it's it, what, what His function is. Okay? May God uh, give us discernment. Last, last question. Um, the gentleman behind you. Oh, we have a question on this side? So wait a minute. We'll, we'll take this one. Fadal <laughs> Amir. What's the proper age? Um, I mean, I think, I think it's like with them, we could use simple examples at, at any... I mean, whenever they're able to, I don't, I, I'm not really sure about that, but maybe Abuna can like help with that one. I'm not, I mean, we always use simple examples. So, I don't know, I, I know this is not right, but maybe like a three-leaf clover, okay? Uh, St. Patrick's Day was just here, so three-leaf clover. Uh, that's the emblem of the saint. That uh, thing that I showed you, you know, I, I mean, again, but it's always limited always limited. It's not complete. It's not uh, uh, accurate. Yes. Uh, me? Yes, you have you. I was going to ask, um, what's the wisdom behind God on the cross saying um, the part from Psalm 22? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Okay, that, that psalm, that psalm is a very confusing psalm. Okay? But as, as His Holiness Pope Shinud explained it, and uh, which all the fathers before, they said that um, when he was saying that, he was, he was, God the Son is one. Sometimes he speak, and I'm, again, one subject. He's one. He, as God, he, one, as God, raises Lazarus. He, as God, hungers and sleeps. Okay? So, when he says that, he's saying it representing a, all of humanity. Not that there's two. That's Nestorianism. That's why St. Cyril of Alexandria would always say there's one subject and you can never chop him in half. The only time you can think about, about Christ in two ways is before the incarnation. I'm sorry? Before the hypostatic union or before the incarnation. After that, we never speak about him too. That's why I'm saying he, the one, the hypostatic, the, the divine and, and, and human, logos, who took flesh, he spoke like this, or he did like this. Okay? Sabuna, Fadda. يجي عليه وقت فينا يقول أنا قد أقدر أشرح أي حاجة عن ربنا وكل الناس تفهمها إحنا إلى الآن مش فهمين ولو قلنا أن إحنا فهمين يبقى نزلنا ربنا المستوى عقلنا المحدود يبقى ربنا مش محدود فمهما شرحنا حتى من ضمن أهم الحاجات اللي كان بيظهر بها ربنا في العهد قديم الناس كان إيه السحاب ليه السحاب دي معناها حاجة 
ما اقدرش اشوفها بوضوح انا كلير لان ربنا عايز يقول مستحيل الانسان هيقدر يدرك اي شيء عن ربنا ادراك كامل والا يبقى ربنا اصبح محدود لينا عشان كده هتلاقي احنا كمسيحيين برضو مش فاهمين مهما شرحنا نيجي في الاخر نقول اللي احنا فاهمينه عن ربنا القليل جدا 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 عشان كده نعذر غير المؤمنين لما برضو مش قادرين يفهموا الموضوع صعب لا يستطيع احد ان يقول رب الا بالروح القدس بالروح القدس بيدينا حته ايمان لكن مش هيدينا مش هنقدر نستوعب استيعاب كامل صح يعني بعد ما قدس ابونا شرح هل احنا كلنا مستوعبين الثالوث بالظبط مستحيل لو استوعبناه بالظبط يبقى الله في مستوانا احنا المحدود يبقى مش الله I want to thank Abuna Taban for the great um, talk and hopefully يعني, we, to the extent, as Abuna mentioned, to the extent that we can, we, uh, God uh, gives us little by little to um, يعني, begin, to tr- begin as Abuna, it's interesting how he says, we begin to try to understand the, يعني, the Trinity. يعني, احنا, لسة, we didn't even touch the surface. Abuna, just one more معلش, question. Somebody want to carry good? Okay. Thank you, Abun. Rabban is khalik lina. Rabban is in khidmatak, Abun. Thank you. Mina al-lil wa yazid sabiqika. Iyuki ayunil ghatihi nikaika. Sasi wa nasani wa nanika. Wa shibari wa nwadi wa bintai. Christ our God, I want to tell you my name and take care of you some name and take care of you kind of a name for you talk to the goal and be on this morning of my shiny and me time the Lord make us worthy to pray thank you for saying and father give us this day our daily bread forgive us our trespasses as we forgive us lead us not deliver us through Christ Love of God the Father, the grace of His only begotten Son, our Lord, our God, and our Savior, Jesus Christ, the gift, fellowship, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You now go in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with your spirit. We want to present Abuna with a small no, 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 uh, no, a small gift. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Abuna, again.